This is the story of the founder of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the founder of Scientology and a secret ritual that was performed in the desert one fateful night in 1946, where a portal was opened and spiritual entities, i.e. UFOs, came through, heralding the beginning of a new era of humanity. No, this is not science fiction. This is the true story of the infamous Babylon Working Ritual. In this End Times production special report, we are going to show you just how dark our world really is. In the vast spectrum of 20th century occult practices, few have garnered as much attention and controversy as the Babylon working ritual. Orchestrated by the enigmatic figures of Jack Parsons, a brilliant rocket scientist and co-founder of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, and L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, this series of rituals sought to manifest the Thelemic goddess Babylon and usher in a new era of human consciousness. But what was the true nature of the Babylon working? And what does it tell us about the convergence of science, religion, and esoteric pursuits in the modern age? To fully grasp the significance of the Babylon working, one must first understand the Thelemic backdrop against which it was set. Alistair Crowley, a British occultist and mystic, founded the religious movement of Thelema in the early 20th century. Central to Thelemic cosmology is the figure of Babylon, a goddess figure embodying the liberating and transformative forces of the feminine divine. In Crowley's vision, Babylon would play a pivotal role in the forthcoming Aeon of Horus, a new era of human evolution and spiritual emancipation. Jack Parsons, an ardent follower of Crowley's teachings, believed himself to be a key agent in this coming transformation. While many knew Parsons for his groundbreaking work in rocketry, fewer were aware of his deep engagement with the occult. In early 1946, Parsons was joined by L. Ron Hubbard, an aspiring writer who would later achieve fame or infamy as the founder of Scientology. The two embarked on the Babylon Working, a series of rituals designed to incarnate the spirit of Babylon into human form, ultimately aiming to birth the so-called Moon Child, a magical child heralding a new dawn for humanity. You've looked into the satanic side of the occult, correct? They practice satanic worship. She said he was conceived out of a nightmare during some satanic cult ritual. Drawing from a combination of Thelemic rites, Enochian magic, and their own innovations, Parsons and Hubbard conducted the ritual over several weeks. They believed their efforts bore fruit when Parsons met and became involved with an artist named Marjorie Cameron, whom he considered the earthly embodiment of Babylon. There was an event that took place back in the late 40s known as the Babylon Working Ritual. Now, this was a ritual that was carried out by Jack Parsons, uh, JPL, you know, people will even to this day say that JPL stands for, for Jack Parsons Laboratories, but on paper, it's Jet Propulsion Laboratories. JPL is major, it's a historic, I mean, so much surrounding this, so much history here. Uh, Jack Parsons was not professionally trained, yet he was tapping into high technology and building rockets. How do you do that without any type of formal training? There were no rocket programs in America before Jack Parsons. This is paramount to understand. This guy was tapping into you know, theosophy, Thelema, Thelema, the, the religion of Aleister Crowley. Uh, he was a disciple of Aleister Crowley, and he was working with uh, L. Ron Hubbard, who was the founder of Scientology. Interestingly, not only did L. Ron Hubbard uh, start Scientology, but he was a science fiction writer. Uh, the movie Battlefield Earth with John Travolta, well, that was written by L. Ron Hubbard. Interestingly, also, John Travolta is a Scientologist, right? Now, I've mentioned this because this is a man who writes science fiction yet he started a religion based on science fiction, there has to be something in there where he's getting these clues and these these ideas, he's getting these from another realm. From that point, you know, they ripped a, a hole open into space time. And from that point afterwards, you had, um, well, regardless of what Parsons actually successfully uh, completed during that with the Horn Babylon and different things. After that, you had the Roswell incident, you had the Kenneth Arnold uh, sightings, you had in 53, there was uh, the swarm of UFOs that flew over the White House. 
Um, and so there's this this uh, unleashing of supernatural activity that took place after that ritual was performed. Babylon working was successful according to Jack Parsons. Uh, matter of fact, Parsons said in his Antichrist Manifesto that they were successful and that a child, a child was conceived in that act and that there was a spirit known as Hilarion. The whore of Babylon was what they were trying to bring about. They believed what we believe and that America was the final Babylon. Like this was the revived Babylon. They believed it and they were occultists. You know, we're Christians and we believe it. There's evidence to back this up. But yes, uh, let, let's backtrack just for a second. What happened was they opened up this portal, they created a rift and entities began to come through, not just this horror of Babylon being birthed, but other entities, because people all over the place started having paranormal encounters and they began to report this to law enforcement, report this to the, to the FBI, report this to whatever agency they can get in touch with. And so the federal agencies said, we've got to come up with an answer for this. You know, we were not prepared for any of this. There's UFO activity, there's, there's talk of entities and demons and winged creatures and just all kinds of weird, I mean, just paranormal demonic activity following this ritual that Jack Parsons said finally worked. They did the ritual for a couple years. It finally worked, finally stuck. And that's what a scientist does. A scientist is going to work at something. He's going to work at the hypothesis until it's, it's you know proven true or false. Despite their apparent success, the partnership between Parsons and Hubbard soon soured, with Hubbard absconding with a boat and funds they had invested together. Parsons would face further professional and personal setbacks before his untimely death in a laboratory explosion in 1952. The ritual also underscores the blurred boundaries between science, religion and magic in the mid-20th century. Both Parsons and Hubbard, each influential in their respective fields, were deeply enmeshed in occult practices, reflecting a broader societal fascination with the unknown. No, it's delinquency. It's satanic. Some kind of ritual satanic in nature i don't know um, satanic ritual oh all the time just as parsons and hubbard sought to channel otherworldly energies through their ritual society at large became captivated by the notion of otherworldly visitors alistair crowley the foundational figure of thelema and a significant influence on parsons once sketched a being he contacted during an earlier ritual named lamb the visage of Lamb bears an uncanny resemblance to modern depictions of grey aliens, with its oversized cranium and piercing almond-shaped eyes. Could magical rituals, like those of Crowley and later Parsons, serve as a bridge between dimensions or realities, possibly connecting to extraterrestrial realms? Government testing, paranormal activity, interdimensional communications, you name it. Perhaps Tabitha is summoning them to kill us all. An alien invasion? As we stand at the crossroads of science and spirit, perhaps we'll find that magic and mystery are, in fact, the very fabric of the cosmos. This is especially true for biblical theology. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12, sums it up nicely. Quote, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is exactly what L. Ron Hubbard and Jack Parsons were invoking that fateful night in the desert. I want to thank you for watching this video, and until next time, God bless you all.